If you're an author or plan to be one, get excited because this podcast is for you. Book Marketing Mentors is the only podcast dedicated to helping you successfully market and sell your book. If you're ready for empowering conversations with successful marketing mavens, then grab a coffee or tea and listen in to your host, international best-selling author, Susan Friedman. Welcome to Book Marketing Mentors, the weekly podcast where you learn proven strategies, tools, ideas, and tips from the masters. Every week, I introduce you to a marketing master who will share their expertise to help you market and sell more books. Today, my special guest is Kate Orr, the owner and founder of Simple Pin Media, a Pinterest management and marketing company. Through their work with over 700 Pinterest accounts, they take a data-driven approach to crafting a Pinterest strategy that aims to help their clients and students find their perfect person on Pinterest. Kate teaches thousands of people about Pinterest marketing through speaking engagements and her podcast, The Simple Pin Podcast. Kate, what an absolute pleasure it is to welcome you to the show and thank you for being this week's guest expert and mentor. Yeah, you're so welcome. I'm delighted to be here. Kate, I'm not sure that I've actually talked to anybody in the six years that we've been doing this show in depth about Pinterest. I think it's come up occasionally, but this is going to be a real in-depth session. So I'm excited and I know you are because this is your life. Yes. Let's tap into that expertise of yours. And I never like to assume that anybody listening is familiar with what we're talking about. So let's just literally start at the beginning and say, what is Pinterest in a nutshell? Great question. It is a search and discovery platform. So we don't put it in the bucket of social media like we would Instagram or TikTok. We put it in the bucket of Google or YouTube. It's where people go to discover ideas or products or even things they want to dream into in the future. That's really the best way to describe it. That's really interesting. And as I think about Pinterest, and I know that it's full of pretty pictures because that's what I've seen in the past. And as I told you earlier, my daughter, whenever she needs something, you know, a birthday party idea or recipe... You know, where did you get it? Pinterest. So, hmm. But there's also Instagram out there. And Instagram is also full of pretty pictures. So what's the difference? So on Instagram, we're prompted to follow people. We think of it more as people are being interested in a product or a brand or an influencer. And so we take this action to follow them because we want to get consumed in their lives or the behind the scenes. Whereas when we go to Pinterest, we really enter the platform thinking about ourselves. So the best way to describe it is Instagram is very much, I'm enamored with other people's lives. And Pinterest is very much, I'm enamored with my own life. So I approach it with asking questions like, what are the best pillows for my couch or books to read on vacation or anything along those lines? We start with questions, not brands or influencers. That's really the best way to distinguish it from Instagram. That's really interesting because what's coming to my mind then is that people aren't following you because you're Kate All or I'm Susan Friedman. They're following you more because of your ideas about a certain subject. Would that be correct? Yes, absolutely. So they have a search bar at the top of Pinterest. And when people use that, what they're doing is putting in a question, again, like they would on Google, what are the best books to read on vacation or best tips for traveling to a certain location? And then what happens is Pinterest has this main home feed that they call the smart feed. And it's designed to be consumed with your interests, maybe the people you follow because they share the same interests and then potential future interests that Pinterest might think you're interested in. So it's a very interest-based platform And that tie is connected with the business and that interest. So if people are really interested in writing a book or they're learning about Pinterest marketing, they follow me because they hope that those things that I'm talking about will show up in their smart feed because they're interested in it. Fascinating. I mean, this is, again, as I said, a whole different perspective. And what you said right at the beginning, that this isn't a social media platform, whereas I would have 
if you had asked me the question, is it or not? And I would have definitely said it was. So I'm learning all the time. Going back to basics, how does one even get started on Pinterest? Yeah. So the number one we tell business owners is get your profile on Pinterest. So that's just simply setting up an account. Some people already have a personal account that they've used. You can convert that to a business account. But if you just want to leave it there, you can leave it and start with a new business account. And you're thinking of your profile page kind of like your listing in the phone book. It is all about who you are, what you do, and how to get to your website. Pinterest, you know, they give you all the prompts to really fill all of that out. And then you can create a board. And a board basically is, think of it like a bucket that holds all of your content ideas in a certain silo. So if it's going to be around couch pillows, I'll just kind of pull that one out. And it's going to be all about what you talk about with couch pillows or the products. And those pins lead back to a destination. So when we think about just getting started, think about your profile as this place that says, here's who you are and what you do. And it clearly states it at the top of your profile. What's going through my mind, and you said it earlier, that this is all about you. So it's very altruistic. I mean, it's like, okay, let me show you what I've got here. Focusing on our listeners who, as you know, are primarily nonfiction authors, how would they use Pinterest? Well, that's a big question, but I'll kind of break it down to say number one is that I would go on to Pinterest and I would search the topic that your book is related to and see if people are already searching for that particular piece. So can you give me an example of maybe some titles of books of people in your community? Just whatever comes to your mind. I'm going to give you mine. Riches and Niches, How to Make It Big in a Small Market. Oh, so good. Okay. What I would do is I would start by looking, are people talking about how to make money, how to start a business or small business or how to niche down in business? It's really this probably 30 minutes to an hour of just investigating what is out there on Pinterest. And the cool thing is, is that when you type in a phrase to the search bar on Pinterest, it gives you search prediction. And this tells you the words and the phrases that come up underneath what people are already searching. So if you see your topic there, something close to the topic, then you know, oh, okay, people are already wondering about this over here. So it's coming at the position from not necessarily selling your book right away, but tapping into that interest of piquing people's like, oh, this is an option or I want to read more because you can see that they're already doing it. So right away, it would be, I would go into Pinterest and search your topic and search what's there and see if that is already happening on Pinterest. So the topic that relates primarily to the book would be, let's say, marketing or target marketing. And as you rightly said, niche marketing. And I applaud you for saying niche. That's good. (laughs) My listeners know that it's like, yeah, I'm a Francophile and no bones about it. And it is for me, it's niche. However, the book is Riches in Niches, which because it rhymes so nicely. Right. But that aside. (laughs) Okay. So if we're talking about niche marketing, we're going to go with that. Then I would do that search and then I would begin to add words like that. So I'm going to back up a little bit and say how the algorithm works on Pinterest. So What Pinterest is looking for is they are looking to match up a business owner who's talking about a particular topic with a regular pinner who is looking for a particular topic. And the way they do that is through keywords. So they're looking to see what business is talking about this particular topic. They'll look at their profile, which we talked about a minute ago. So you would add niche marketing in your description of what you do. And then you would begin to create boards that are centered around how to get into niche marketing, or maybe there's a specific type of topic that you would cover in your particular board or content. And so then Pinterest says, oh, this person is talking about this. We will now share that content with this person, even if they don't follow them. That person sees the pin, clicks on it, and then comes to your website to discover you. 
because the pinner is primed. They understand that they have to move off the platform to get information. And again, that's a distinguisher between Instagram where on Instagram, it's really hard to get people to move out of Instagram. But with Pinterest users, they know, oh, I'm going to have to go read more to learn about this topic of niche marketing. Let's talk about a board. What exactly is a board? And then you talked about a pinner. Am I the pinner or is, excuse my ignorance here, but no, the I love person it. who's coming and seeking my information, the pinner? And maybe yes. that's a stupid question, but we say nope. there's no such thing as a stupid question. <laughs> exactly. That's a fantastic question. So a pinner is a regular user of Pinterest. A creator is a business user. So that's a really a great way to distinguish between the two. So you are a creator. A pinner is somebody who's a user of the platform. So when we talk about boards, what we're talking about is on your profile, you can create a board and then inside that board will be different pins. The best way to describe it is when we had magazines that people read all the time, they would pull out pages of the magazine because they wanted to save things for later. And then some people would put them into binders and these binders would have sections in them based on categories. Think of boards like that binder. It has, and each one is a separate category. So you're taking and you're putting specific pages or things that, you know, the pinner might like in these specific categories so that they can discover them. And they come to your profile. Again, think of it like a binder and they can begin to look through the different categories you have in your binder to discover more. This is very strategic. I mean, this isn't just let's slap something up there. Let's talk about that, the actual strategy in terms of the content that you're putting out there on your board. Yes. We break it into strategies and tactics. So we look at strategy to say, why do you want to use Pinterest to reach your end user? It could be something as simple as, I would like to use Pinterest to increase my email list growth so that people can discover when I have a book launch. Or I would like to increase my awareness of my book because I want more people to know about it. So that would be number one. Then when we go into tactics, the way that you pin a pin is it has to have an image and that is a two to three image. So it's a tall image, which again is different than every single other platform out there. (laughs) This image acts as a billboard because people, when they're in their app, they're going to thumb by and really they're only looking at images. There's text that you can add below the pin, but they're not reading that. That's mostly for the algorithm. So we have these images that have really just like a billboard, you'd be able to read it super fast, less than a second. Yours might say something like how to get into niche marketing or how to niche down in your marketing. And then somebody would click on that and it would go to the article on your website. So if I'm going to think of a strategy, think of a tactics, I want to add pins to my boards so that it has a great image, a great pin description. That's where those keywords come in. And then that gets into this Pinterest ecosystem where it can be seen at any time. Now, this is really important. Pinterest doesn't have a time-based algorithm. Whereas on Instagram, if I post something... I might see it maybe 15 minutes, half hour, maybe two days shelf life. And then it's pretty much gone forever. Well, in Pinterest, somebody can discover my pin six months, eight months, a year even after I've pinned it and I can still get traffic. We're pinning to a platform that has this like really long-term traffic capabilities. So I said a lot there. So I'll kind of pause here and see if there's any questions about the pins, the boards, kind of that tactic. And I'm getting into this slowly but surely. What came up for me, first of all, is how often do you do this? Because Mm. when they talk about social media, X number of times a week, and there are certain times of the day that you would post. How does that work on Pinterest? Yeah, well, the great thing is, is there's no worry about the times per day. You can pin whenever. Just set that aside. Number two is they do say consistency matters. But that also has to do with how much content you have on your site. If you have a backlog of several blog posts, then you could probably pin one or two per day 
to your boards. But let's say you're just starting out and you don't have a lot. The great thing that you can utilize, let's say you have 10 blog posts on your website. You could create two to three Pinterest images for each blog post. Let's say you have blog post number one. You could pin that first image today and then maybe in a couple of days, maybe a couple of days after that. And then that second blog post can go in there too. There isn't really on Pinterest when it comes to adding pins to the platform, there's not really a whole lot of science to it. It's more that whole art of how much content do you have? How many images do you have? And if you could stick with one or two per day, that'd be great. And you can repeat pins. That's okay too. There's not that fear of if you share something too, you can share it too much. Obviously, if you're pinning 25 times of the same pin per day, that's not good. But that's really what you want to avoid. What's going through my mind, and I never thought about this before, but let's say that I wanted to post the podcast. I mean, I've got, yep. you know, 617 at the moment and counting. And I've got a nice promo graphic that I've mm-hmm. got my face and my guest face. And obviously yours will be on yours when your episode comes out. Then the title. Would that make a good pin, would you say, on my board that I might, what would I call it? Would I call it book marketing mentors or would it just be book marketing? Help me with that. Here's what I would do having a podcast too as well. This is great. I would have an image that says how to market your book on Pinterest because that's really what we're kind of going deep on here. And then you can use our faces or you could even just have an image with books and maybe something that conveys marketing in that stock image, whatever it might be. And then you definitely want to have your logo, your branding, right? Or the name of your podcast. We do that with ours. We put it in our logo, Simple Pin Podcast. The only thing I tell people is avoid the bottom right corner because Pinterest has a visual search and they have this little thing they put over that. So it would block your logo. Then you'd have your image, how to market your book on Pinterest. And then you would max out your pin description, two to three natural sounding sentences along the lines of, listen to this podcast today to learn more about how to market your book on Pinterest with these easy tips to help make your marketing easy. Or you could even say to help make your niche marketing easy. You could do lots of different things. You just want to make sure it sounds natural, like you're sending a text to a friend. And then when you add that image to Pinterest, then you link it to where you want it to go. Now, some people will ask me if they should link directly to a podcast player. We tell people that they want to go directly to the website because a lot of people are on Pinterest on their phone and they may not have that podcast player or it just app to app integrations are kind of funky. So you would go straight to your website from there. And then here's a bonus. You can create another image for that where it might say, have you ever thought about marketing your book on Pinterest? Question mark. And now I've really piqued somebody's curiosity. You can use the same pin description and then it links to that same page you want them to go to. And you can see which one got more engagement. But the graphic would be different each time, correct? Correct. You can reuse the graphic. You can pin that same original graphic again to a different board, but you can create two to three different graphics for one podcast. And because you have so many podcasts, you have a ton that you could go back through and create Pinterest images for. Well, I'm definitely going to look at yours and how you do it because yeah. that's going to uh, be my little template there. I know that because I'm sure you do a really good job with it. I've heard people say that they actually make money from their posts on Pinterest or their pins on Pinterest. Talk to us about that possibility or how that happens. Yeah, this is an interesting development that I think continues to evolve with Pinterest. So there's a couple of different ways. Some people might make money because they have pinned their pins and it's driving traffic back to their website. And then they have ads on their website or they do affiliate marketing. That would be number one. Number two is they would do affiliate marketing on the platform. Maybe they'd talk about other books that people can go to Amazon and buy or another bookstore to buy. And number three is this new creator rewards program 
that Pinterest has just introduced within the last six months. And this is because Pinterest added a new type of pin called an idea pin. This is really to capture some of that, I guess, TikTok wave that's out there, that short form video, people getting caught up in that. They wanted creators to create these short form video or short static idea pins to get people to stay on the platform longer. Because remember, I talked about in the beginning that Pinterest users are used to finding an idea and moving off the platform. Well, Pinterest was like, "Um, we actually want you guys to stick around longer. So we're going to put these new types of pins in place. And in order to make them successful, we're going to pay creators to make them. This is something that when you have a business account, you'll see it on mobile at the top of underneath settings, I believe it says like hub and earn. If you click on earn, it will show ways that you can make money, but it's very limited right now to about five or six niches. So you just have to see if your niche is in that section, but that's really how we're seeing people make money on Pinterest right now. Now, are these just static photos or are you actually able to use video on Pinterest? Yeah, you can use both actually. This idea pin, which I highly encourage all people that are about to market on Pinterest, that you open up it on your phone so you can see what most users are seeing. And then a lot of the new features are there. At the top of your Pinterest app are these little tiny bubbles. They look like Instagram stories. In fact, Pinterest originally called them stories. They're not stories, they're idea pins now. Pinterest is telling you, you can use static images and you can use video or a combination of both to convey an idea. Let's say we took the podcast that we're doing here. We can do an idea pin that is three things you need to know to market your business on Pinterest or market your book on Pinterest. One slide can be tip number one. Next slide can be tip number two, tip number three. Then they at the end, they go to your profile. Here's the hitch. They don't link to your website. They only link at the end to your Pinterest profile. So there's a big uproar over this because marketers were used to Pinterest linking, right? Well, now this is a way to keep people on the platform a little bit longer. So if you do have video, this is the best place to incorporate that video. One of the things that... Uh listeners love is hearing about mistakes, Kate. And there probably are just a few that people can make. (laughs) Of course, I'm being a little sarcastic. (laughs) I know that I would have made a ton already, but uh, help us with that. All right. Number one, I would say is not going to your profile and going through all the settings to make sure that everything is connected correctly and that it really does reflect your business and your brand. A lot of people go straight into pinning and they forget that. So that's number one. Number two, not being very intentional with your images. So we use Canva. We really like that tool for the Pinterest templates. And we really think because Pinterest is so image driven, one of the mistakes that business owners make is that they overlook this just to get the image out fast. There's always going to be a learning curve, right? To learning how to get great images. But when it comes to what you put on those images, don't be flat. Be really catchy. Be very brief. This is not the place where you're going to add a section from your book. You want to have that teaser that's there in your images to really get people interested in saving your pin or clicking on your pin. A big mistake we see people make is just not putting priority on their images. And then the third is not leveraging the keywords for that search factor. Just writing a real basic one sentence keyword pin description and not really thinking about what your end user is searching, not really trying to connect with them. It's just really filling a box, right? Because we have marketing fatigue, right? Like we're all exhausted. But if you can slow down a little bit with Pinterest max out those pieces of images and then your descriptions, that will help you in the long term. And I have one bonus mistake for you. That is not giving it enough time. Pinterest marketing 
the joke is it's not very fun because there's not a, a lot of dopamine hits in the marketing like you would see on Instagram where you get hearts and you get likes and you get all these things that make us feel really good. Where on Pinterest, because there's not a lot of conversation, it feels like you're not doing anything. And that's very normal. So we tell people to give your Pinterest marketing at least six to eight months investment to really see who you're connecting with and how it's working. And so many people we see give up after a month because they say it's just not doing anything. It is very common. I will tell you over and over again in all the Pinterest accounts we've worked with, that is normal. So really, really plan on that investment for six to eight months. Wow, so much great information. What's going through my mind as well? And there are lots of things. I mean, my mind's going crazy with all of this great stuff. Earlier, you talked about a strategy and that was building an email list. I know that, you know, from a website standpoint, you would have a form that people would fill in for some kind of lead magnet. How would you do that within Pinterest? Yeah. So one of the great things that I'll give an example of what we've done is we started marketing out on Pinterest, not with the intent right away to grow our email list, but really just to learn what did the Pinterest users like as far as our content. And after that six to eight months investment, what we realized is all of our how-to content, whenever anything started with a how-to, people loved it. They came to our website. They spent a longer amount of time there. And so then we looked at our number one how-to post and said, okay, this one is how to clean up Pinterest boards. Every time we talk about this, people really want to learn. So why don't we give them a checklist? And then we have them sign up for the email list to get that checklist. Slowly and surely in the background, there was five or six per day. Sometimes there were 12 per day. And then we looked at the other how-tos and we said, is there another way we could do something that would be a how-to? I wouldn't suggest creating an email opt-in for every single one of your Pinterest posts, but eventually seeing the kind of thread and what people are interested in before you dive in right away to it. You can lead people to your landing page off of Pinterest. If you have an email opt-in right now and you are seeing people sign up for it, you can create your own Pinterest image, upload it and link to that landing page and just see how it does. Again, you're not going to see much movement in the first couple of weeks, but that is one strategy you could start right off the bat. Fascinating. As I said, I mean, I'm just like, whoa, Mm -hmm. (laughs) we can talk for hours about this because it's so fascinating. And Kate, our listeners are probably chomping at the bit to know, how can we get hold of this woman? (laughs) We need her in our life. Well, number one, I have a podcast too. So you're in your podcast player, just search Simple Pin Podcast and just start listening. We have lots of tips. And then at simplepinmedia.com, we have a full resource library and blog posts. We like to think of ourselves as the education library for Pinterest. So if you have a question, put it in the search bar and chances are there is a post on that topic. We love resources. We love them when they're free. And yes, listeners, I mean, I went to Kate's website and looked at all the different topics that she's covered. And I mean, we could go on for hours (laughs) with this conversation. Kate, if you were to leave our listeners with a golden nugget, what would that be? I think it would be to really spend 30 minutes just on Pinterest before you do anything else, before you dive even into my website or seeing if Pinterest is right for you, just go play around with the platform because we find that the best marketers are really the best users because they understand what their person is looking at. So just spend 30 minutes. You can maybe even spend an hour if you'd like. But that is the number one thing we suggest people do before they dive in to see what do you see on Pinterest that really piques your interest? What do you love? Just set aside that time and then dive in from there. Kate, you've been amazing. This has been such incredible wisdom. And listeners, I know you're going to listen to this several times because there was so much. I know I am because I couldn't write as fast as Kate was talking. So... (laughs) Thank you for sharing all of that. 
And thank you, Orla, for taking time out of your precious day to listen to this interview. And I sincerely hope that it sparked some ideas you can use to sell more books. Here's wishing you much book and author marketing success. The time is now to take action and finally build your book selling empire. And the great news is that Susan is here to help you. Visit bookmarketingmentors.com and sign up for a free 15-minute book marketing strategy session with Susan. She'll help you discover your first steps to marketing and selling your book. Only those who take action are rewarded, so visit bookmarketingmentors.com. And we'll see you again next week 